Welcome back. Now, Alex Forbes has benefited from its newly built business pipeline. The group posted its interim results, reporting strong cash generated from continuing operations, a robust balance sheet, and a sound capital surplus. Alex Forbes is set to diversify its offering and plans to launch a discretionary fund management arm. Group CEO David de Villiers joins us now to unpack that performance and the group's upcoming plans. Davi, thanks so much um, for joining us today. Now, it's been a pretty upbeat six months with the firm delivering double-digit profit growth, operating income coming at 13%, assets under management also up double digits. Davi, as we get started, just walk us through some of the growth factors um, boosting this overall performance. Good evening, yes, and uh, thanks for having me. We, um, what is pleasing about the results, um, as you've correctly highlighted, is it's, it's like across it's across the board, you know. So, so we've uh, we've had a continuous few years of good new business which have come through. Uh, we've had, you know, the streamlining of the of the business which has come through. A lot of um, acquisitions which have really, you know, sometimes you buy a business and then the result doesn't really come through. We've actually achieved most of the return on capital that we set ourselves when we when we bought those businesses, and you can see how those are. Are, uh, are contributing to the bottom line and as you say there's been you know the markets have helped a bit and um, um, the pleasing thing is that, that it seems like all of the different actions are coming together to give us this result which is very nice. Now all this was achieved within a tough macroeconomic environment both locally as well as globally we've also had some volatile markets and the risks don't necessarily seem like they're going to ease up anytime soon well at least for the short term right uh, Davi with that being said is this kind of growth uh, sustainable moving forward I think so. I think so. And, th and the reason why I sound relatively positive mm -hmm. is is the fundamentals are in place in the business. You know, we um, I remember vividly a few years ago when the analyst told me, you know, in your type of business, in this type of environment in South Africa, there's no growth because we don't have employment and we don't really have the markets to, to push you. And, um, and you know, there's no GDP growth. So so your business is, 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 is at best a flat business. And um, because of the way we've set up the business and because of the way that we, you know, ultimately treating clients, this is a client business. So if you treat clients well and you get new business and more clients want to be your clients, you know, then you're winning market share and in a, in a business where you can win market share and increase your fees because of good service. Um, I think it's doable. Um, we will never shoot the lights out, as as you know. One analyst told me, this is not the type of business where you do a 30% revenue, you know, year on year. But if you if you can grow your revenue a little bit more than your expenses, the jaws open up, and then it's quite a nice profit growth that you can that you can make every year. And and I think that is sustainable. Now let's zoom into that local picture. You did mention some of those risks, the low growth environment. Um, we have fiscal issues. We have load shedding. There's a lot happening um, locally. We also have a, a, a local election coming up next year. Just talk to us about how the local environment has, in, has in, impacted investment moves or will impact investment moves moving forward. I am... Um I always tell our economists you shouldn't look you know for for signals by analyzing the whole market you can just look at our business for signals <laughs> into the future because we can immediately see when the consumer struggles you know um because they they start saving less they withdraw money they they switch jobs you know you can see how people get retrained so so certainly um, um, um not a, not a great environment for the individual definitely struggling a lot of indebtedness and and we can see that the more that that we engage now with our individual clients mm -hmm. you know the more you can find out that it's a, it's a real struggle out there um, um with regards to debt and, and cash flows and, and payments and then the corporates itself also struggling you know you don't see you don't see many corporates expanding many corporates building new um, lines of business or hiring new people or building new warehouses that's just not happening it's a question of maintaining so so i think that environment um, is going to continue for quite a while mm -hmm. and the businesses in South Africa that wants to be successful will have to be competitive and more competitive and on the edge relative to their competitors. 
Now, the group has been pretty on track with its strategy. We talked about this at the top, selling most of its insurance units and um, picking up a lot of the uh, 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 um, acquisitions that are more retail focused. Would you say we're nearing the end of that um, turnaround strategy or are you still keen to acquire more businesses? So on the on the sales, definitely we've uh, we've done we've finished off um, all the insurance businesses, all the capital intensive. We've actually come to a point where, um, and it's part of the results now, where most of the capital um, that was tied up by these insurance businesses were released as well, and that's why we have quite a bit of cash, you know, on the on the balance sheet. It's just the culmination of of the ending of those insurance businesses going through the regulatory processes. So that's quite a nice position to be in. Um, we'll continue to look for acquisitions. We've done a few bigger ones and a few smaller ones, all very strategic, all very aligned to the strategy. And you know, these things come along every now and then, and we'll always be on the lookout for, for more acquisitions. But we don't do acquisitions just for the sake of it. We'll, we'll be, it'll be 100% in line with you know, our strategic focus. And as you rightly said, building retail and strengthening the scale of our core businesses, which is admin and consulting. I mean, the cash is there, so it'll be pretty interesting to see what piques your interest. Before I let you go, Davi, the two-part system um, will be put in place um, by next year, March. Walk us through the kind of impact this will have on the retirement business in particular. Yes, yeah, so so I think um, a very interesting point, and I know very topical at the moment. And if if you know if we have a minute, I'll quickly quickly explain to you why I think so. So for us, firstly, your question, um, I, I think it's 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 wonderful for the retirement fund business, asset management businesses, mm -hmm. because there will be more preservation. People will have more money in the pot um, and more money to be managed. And, you know, so from that point of view, there's a little bit of a benefit for the industry. We've been talking about preservation for, for long. The bigger benefit, though, is for the state and for the member itself. You know, we're talking about on average members have uh, between 10 and 20 percent of, of um, their salary as retirement income. You know, that's just not acceptable. Should be close to 75 percent. The reason for that is preservation. And that burden becomes the family's burden. You know, kids and fathers and brothers and sisters must pay in retirement for people when they reach retirement. You see more and more people wanting to extend the retirement age because they just don't have enough to retire off and they want to continue to work. So, so if we can get this two-part system to work, not our generation, but the next generation will be much better off. They'll be much better off and there'll be less of a burden on the state. And that's why I'm so excited that Treasury, Minister of Finance, you know, the departments have taken this quite seriously because they leave a legacy. You know, in 20 years time, people are going to go back and say this, 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 this department, this, the people in charge now, they left a legacy for the state and for the individuals to be better off. And that's quite powerful, you know, that's very powerful. And that also shows um, the extent of our financial service. You sometimes, um, lots of things to complain about, you know, uh, corruption, and we complain about ESCOM, we complain about a lot of things. But one thing, one thing that stood the test of time is our financial system and our financial governance. You know, uh, taking national treasury um, and 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 the minister of finance into account. So, so I think a, a great thing for 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 the retirement system, a great thing for South Africa. And once it's gone through, it'll be um, it'll be a, a legacy that was left behind for sure. Yes, definitely something to watch out for and look out for and see how it's actually implemented moving forward. Davi, unfortunately, we have to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us today. That was Davi Davilius, CEO for Alex, Alex Forbes.